just bad news all around today. I want to put these numbers into perspective for you. So Lane County reported its first ever COVID-19 case on March 17th. And on that same day, the Oregon Health Authority reported that we had 18 new cases in the entire state. Kids have been able to escape to Civic Park to get some fresh air and to return to some type of normalcy after being cooped up in their homes for months due to the pandemic. But as you can see from our Sky 9 drone, the field here is mostly empty right now. You do all of that on your own right here on this piece of paper. You use their clean pen, you put it in the dirty container to make sure that nobody's touching the same thing. We've heard plenty of times over the past few months to wear face coverings and we've seen signs saying mask required, but these phrases aren't new. You're going to put your name, your party size and your shoe size all into this computer right here. Then they're going to give you your shoes and you're going to walk over there, pick out your favorite bowling ball, and then you're going to go to the lane that was assigned to you. Now it is important to remember that a lot of adjustments were being made to make sure that everybody is at least six feet apart from one another. So in an effort to make that happen, they shut down every other lane here. The first victim was shot right here in the middle of the street. Now I spoke with the neighbor who lives a few houses down and he says he knew Angelo from church without the help of ring doorbell cameras and this neighborhood right here, along with dash cam footage, we might have never learned how Zakori really died. You have families and children playing and laughing just less than 100 feet away from where the family is currently grieving. I've been sitting outside of Capella's Market for about an hour now, and as you can see, I'm a ways away from the front door in an effort to social distance myself. I've also gone old school. I've got a pad of paper right here, and I've been tallying up how many people go inside are wearing masks. Oregon fans are getting ready to watch the Ducks play in the Pac-12 championship. Talk to me a little bit about the reaction you see from the guys who maybe haven't seen each other in 20, 30 years. Aww. How great is it seeing all of them together? Aww. All of this comes as the United States surpasses 350,000 COVID-19 deaths. To put this into perspective for you, the coronavirus has now claimed more lives than the populations of Orlando or Cincinnati. You heard it right there. Worst air quality in the world is right here in Oregon tonight. I'm sure the biggest question everybody wants answered tonight is when is it going to get better? We begin with KZI 9 News reporter Kennedy Dendy, who is standing by live in front of some of the businesses that were looted last night. And Kennedy, I know you spoke with some owners there. How are they holding up tonight? We have a working fire. Engine 5 will be offensive. What was that? I don't know. Firefighters thought they heard shattering glass in the flames. But as the seconds wore on, the true danger becomes clear. Shots fired! Shots fired! The house fire! Shots fired! We need a piece uh, ASAP! An ambush. Something different was going on that shouldn't be going on. A fire call turns into a fire fight. Gunfire forcing crews to take cover. I'm pinned behind the ambulance. I'm staying put where I'm at. Copy. Do you have eyes on you? Um, sure. Just to the front of the ambulance. While the fire continues to grow, SWAT teams close in. Came out, seen a huge fire, and then cops yelling and screaming, everyone get back in their house because ammo's going off. And there was apparently a man in the street with a gun. Police in a desperate scramble to find the gunman. We whizzed by down here. I heard it. We were standing over by the car and heard it zing by past us. All while the sound of gunfire echoed in the distance. They've got active shots in the background. Hands in around, make sure you get your long guns. With crews pinned down, flames jump from house to house. Soon, three homes are burned to the ground and more threatened. We got the dogs out of the house, loaded every, loaded just ourselves and the dogs out. Um, went and knocked on the neighbor's doors and just made sure everybody's out of their houses. One neighbor rushing into danger to save what he can. In the end, three families losing everything. Everyone off to the side and we just kind of waited and watched our house burn down. Hours later, the gunman, identified as Lance Jacobs, is found dead in the ashes, killed by a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The survivors, thankful to be alive. As much as I don't have all my things, I, I have all my people. Reporting in Springfield, Jillian Smuckler, KZI 9 News. You get the seat of honor, Bernice. The seat she's been waiting for for more than a year now. I'm going to ask you a couple questions real okay. quick. Okay. Do you feel sick today? No. No. Then history. It was over. Yeah. Well, that's that. Or well, when are you going to start? <laughs> I'm already done. Bernice Homan is known at Willamette Oaks for her sense of humor. Are you pregnant or planning on becoming pregnant anytime soon? Oh gosh, that one is okay. very hard to know. <laughs> <laughs> at 
103 years old, she says exercising her mind and her body daily is key. I try to walk every day to the end of the building and, and back. And she inspires many along the way. Her neighbors would go, well, if she could do it, I guess I should be able to do it. Homan was born in South Dakota one year before the influenza pandemic infected one in every four people on the planet, including her even though she doesn't remember much. I was born in 17, and that's when the Spanish flu was, and the doctor was at our house, so I'm sure I had it. The doctor told her mother that she wouldn't make it through the night, but her mother, like Bernice, wasn't giving up that easily. When the doctor left, she decided she would do something about it. Her mother heard that pumpkin seeds were the most helpful thing for the flu. She didn't have a pumpkin in the house, but she started up the street and she stopped at every house on the block. She made pumpkin seed tea and spoon fed Bernice until the sun came up. I opened my eyes and the doctor, when he came back, couldn't believe it. A living, breathing miracle. And it was all thanks to her mother. But despite beating the deadly flu, they never spoke about it again. It was a very emotional thing for her. Now, more than 100 years later, Bernice got the first COVID-19 vaccine in the building. It's a very serious disease, and I am do anything to prevent it. And she's encouraging others to do the same. I think we should stop it from spreading any more than it is. Do everything we can. We're saving lives. When I asked Bernice how her mother would feel knowing she got the shot today, her eyes welled up with tears. Oh, she would be most happy. She lived for her children. A shot, an honor to her mom, but today, a seat of honor for Bernice.